Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's News and Community Spotlight. There has never been a better time to take your PC game from dream to reality. The Epic Games Store is now open to all developers and publishers to distribute PC products through the launch of the new self-service publishing tools. Learn about all the perks of self-publishing your game with Epic at unrealengine.com slash feed. The March Marketplace content is here. Vault over to the feed with the help of the multiplayer vaulting system to find out about the additional content that can help transport you to your next project or end one on a high note with the Opera House kit. So kick back, relax in a modern house or stroll through a complete oak forest admiring the art of shaders. Don't dally too long, they are only free until the end of March. As you may know, State of Unreal is returning to GDC. Tune in live on March 22nd at 9.30 a.m. Pacific to hear the latest updates in game development from Epic Games on both Twitch and YouTube. For the full Unreal GDC breakdown, head to unrealengine.com slash GDC 2023. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody is around to hear it, does it make a sound? We're not here to ask philosophical questions, but have you downloaded the new Quixel Megascan trees yet? In the latest of the growing collection, there are 17 unique tree assets belonging to the European beech species. As before, these are highly optimized, have shader quality tiers, multiple wind implementations, and more. If you haven't already, download them on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. They are a tree. Branching over to this week's Community Spotlights, Environment artist Clara Cox has been working in Unreal Engine 5, utilizing Nanite and Lumen for fast iteration and development of their latest scene, which we can all agree is a fantastical creation. Take the steps to their art station and let them know what you think of Adventurer's Cave. An unexpected journey of a hero set in a solo developed story rich action RPG that leads you through mysterious caves and jungle environments filled with environmental puzzles to uncover the mystery of the absent. Oh, did we mention that the adventurer has no head? Stumble to and wishlist dead no head on Steam. Want to learn the complete process of creating a realistic render and cinematic animation of an architectural project of a cabin in the mountains with Unreal Engine 5? Funny enough, architectural designer and CG artist Stan Zhirikov takes us through literally that and more. Check out this in-depth tutorial on their YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Have an epic week. Hello everyone and welcome back to Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore, and celebrate everything Unreal. I am your host Tina and today with me I have two incredible guests who are going to be diving into the self-publishing tools today, as well as we have two additional guests that you can't see, but they are currently in chat and they will be there answering questions for you. Their names are Doug and Rajan, so if you have any questions make sure you're dropping them in chat and we'll be answering them there, as well as in a Q&A segment that we'll do at the end of the show today. I also, before we dive in, want to give one big shout out to everyone who did the latest community challenge, Speller Performance. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. It was so much fun being able to go through and see what everyone was making, and very excited to see what all you build in the future as well. But with that all to the side, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, introduce our guest for the day. So first, Gwynnie, would you like to tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hey everybody, my name is Gwynnie Winnicky. I'm part of the Epic Games Store team uh, and part of the team that's been working on the self-publishing tools, which we're going to talk about today. Awesome, very excited to have you here. And then next we have Sean. Would you like to tell us yeah. a little bit about yourself as well? Sure. So yeah, by process of elimination, I'm Sean. Uh, I am part of the business development team here at Epic Game Store. And basically what that means is that we are the group that uh, manages relationships with publishers and developers, helps them understand everything that's going on with the store and uh, really try to put them in a position to succeed. So yeah, excited to chat about what we've been working on. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to dive right in here. So how about we kick it off? Do you want to tell us about um, the publishing tools in general? And let's just dive in. 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, real quickly before we dive into an overview of the publishing tools and, um, you know, a live demo that's going to be led by Gwenny, I thought it might be helpful to give sort of a, a quick refresher on the Epic Game Store. Um, for folks who may not be super familiar with it and people who you know might just need a little bit more of an update on what we've been working on over the past few years. So Epic Game Store, you know, we, we launched back in 2018 and it was really motivated by this idea of giving a, a more fair share to the developers and publishers making games. If, if you know our store, you probably are familiar already with our, with our unique revenue split. It's 12% to Epic, 88% back to developers. Um, that's really what we hang our collective hat on. It's what we're best known for. But some of the other things that you may not be super familiar with uh, at this stage is that actually um, Unreal Engine developers who are on a standard license, um, they don't owe any engine royalties for game sales, uh, for games distributed on the Epic Game Store. Um, and then on top of that, we also have a really unique supporter creator program where content creators, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, et cetera, uh, they have the opportunity to earn uh, a 5% revenue share um, anytime their unique creator code is applied during checkout. And so it's, you know, it's all kind of bundled into the idea of just really um, giving a more fair share to developers and creators on the store. That's, that's always been our, um, our primary motivation, and that's always been one of the things that we're really driven by as we kind of reach where we are today. So. Speaking of which, um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to see it, but on the Epic Games Store newsfeed, we just released our 2022 year in review, announcing a whole bunch of exciting facts and figures. I'll give you the Cliff's Notes version here. Uh, we just announced that we've hit about 230 million total uh, Epic Games Store PC users with a peak MAU last December of a little over 68 million. Um, so that's that's really exciting, but I think what we're really pumped about is the growth that we've seen in third-party revenue. Quick definition there, third-party revenue basically means anything that's not, you know, Fortnite, All Guys, Rocket League, those types of epic titles, right? Um, so um, that's $355 million last year, which actually represents an 18% lift from the prior year. So that's that's something that we're really excited about. And um, it's also worth noting that, um, you know, uh, a big chunk of the Epic Game Store user audience, um, you know, they're not active customers on Steam. So there's a lot of incrementality there and there's a lot of opportunity for, for developers to capture users that they might not on other PC stores. Um, a lot of that growth has been driven by the way the store has evolved over the past few years. Um, you know, as, as we look at ways to grow the store and, and add new features and improvements, we're really driven by, you know, just improving the user experience for, for developers and players. This is, you know, a quick little highlight reel of some of the things that we rolled out last year. Player ratings and polls to help users make better purchasing decisions, improving the search and browse experience. We've got a lot of users with growing collections of games, both games that they purchased on the store and games they've acquired through our free program which has always been super popular. So adding you know, favorites and folders there has been huge. Um, improving the storefront lists on, um, you know, on the homepage of the store. We also introduced cabin accounts, which is a way to, to make the, um, the experience safer for younger players. This year, we've also got a lot of things uh, in the works. The big one for us is you know, improving the uh, performance of the launcher. We get a lot of feedback on that one. And so you know, making it snappier, quicker, more efficient is gonna be a huge area of focus for us this year. Um, some other cool things we've, that we're working on, there's content hubs, which is a way for publishers and developers to manage a more direct line of communication with their players on the store really huge for folks who ship a lot of uh, content updates. They want to share those patch notes or they just want to get some, uh, some marketing information out to their audience. So that'll be a big one. And then last but certainly not least, support for subscription services. Won't go into too much detail there, but you can probably use your imagination in terms of what that entails. So all of this has kind of put us in a really interesting position where the store is growing. Uh, we're getting a lot of inbound interest from the developer community uh, to bring their games to the store. And in order to actually meet that level of scale, 
we've had to build entirely new tooling to onboard those partners, onboard those games, and um, you know, release that content to, to the Epic Game Store audience. So all of that brings us to our new self-service publishing tools, which is something that we've been cooking up for the past few years. And so I'll hand it over to, to Gwynny now to give us a little bit of an overview on how that works before we do the live demo. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So I'm going to go over just a high level flow of what you can expect from publishing a page to distributing your game. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the key building blocks that you'll use in the tools to set up your product. Um, so to begin here, the very first thing you're going to do is onboard. And this includes creating your organization, adding your team, creating your first game, uh, which we call a product in Dev Portal. And then you're going to accept the Epic Games Store distribution agreement. You'll pay a $100 per product recoupable fee. And I uh, completed basically a brief questionnaire to give us an idea about what you have planned for the launch so we can best support you. And um, then you'll complete your tax and payout information. This is really key because when you launch, we need to be able to pay you. Um, so from there, if you already announced your product or if you're getting ready to announce your product, the very first thing that we want you to do is publish a page, get it out there so that users can see it and wish list. Um, and there's a couple of steps involved in doing that. First, you're going to configure your product settings, base game offer, and page. And we'll talk a little bit in a moment about what exactly are those things. How do I? How do I? How do I do this? Um, you can also obtain an IR grading. This is optional, but strongly encouraged. And then uh, we'll want you to review the marketing best practices to set you up for a successful launch. Um, finally, uh, you'll submit your page for review by our team. Uh, we basically check to make sure that it's in line with our content guidelines. And then once it's approved, uh, you can push it live and users can start wishlisting it. Um, so, so from there, that's where the big work starts, uh, configuring and testing your product. Um, there's a couple of key activities here. Uh, you'll be finalizing your, the regions that you're, you're planning to distribute in, uh, finalizing your ratings and pricing. Um, you can still obtain an IR rating at this point. Again, optional, but strongly encouraged uh, so that you can release in all the regions that, uh, that the store supports. And then uh, you'll spend some time setting up your offers, artifacts, and pages. And I'll, I'll explain a, a little more in a minute about those things, and we'll, look, we'll get a closer look at them in the demo as well. You'll upload your bills and do your end-to-end -end testing. Now, we also have teams that support a couple of extra things that you can take advantage of. Uh, we, ha we have a team that will localize your page content for free, um, and so strongly encourage you to, to take advantage of that so that I, you can have a really successful global launch to all of the different locales that, that our users, um, users tune in from. And then I, we also have a team that's dedicated to supporting you and getting a Grok rating if you choose to release your product in South Korea. All right, so you've, pre you've prepared your whole product, you're ready to go, your submission is ready. You're going to submit it to our team for review. And we review for three major things. The first is to make sure that your page and build content meet the Epic Games Store content guidelines. Second, we have requirements that apply to some products um, I, around distribution, specifically supporting crossplay if you have an online multiplayer game um, that's also launched on other storefronts. Um, and implementing achievements if that's implemented on other storefronts. And then finally, um, we check to make sure that your build and your product configuration are set up for a successful launch so that your users have a great experience. Um, important to note here, if we have feedback for you for on, on your submission, we'll give that to you directly inside the tools. Um, you can go back and make edits and submit again. So just something to consider um, as you're planning out your release timeline. Okay, so you're approved, you're ready to go, it's launch time. You launch your product, we have a dashboard of analytics that'll let you monitor the progress here. Um, you'll be able to patch your bills if you need to, as well as make subsequent product updates, which are also subject to review, I should know. All right, so let's talk briefly about the building blocks that you'll be using in the publishing tools to get your product set up. 
We already talked about the organization. This is where you're going to add your team, add your tax and payout information. And your organization is going to set up a product. You can actually have many products. Um, the, the product contains key information, analytics, settings that will apply to all offers within your product. Now, what is an offer? An offer is the thing that your players buy. Um, and the offer object contains key metadata about what they buy. So pricing information, release date, key images, those are all contained in the offer. Um, and we have several different offer types. Uh, base game is all products are going to get a base game, but you'll also have the add-ons, additions, etc. All right, so the store presence of your product is actually made up of pages. And you'll see that by default, your, your base game offer has a page. You can also optionally create it for other offer types. And you can also add FAQ pages to give your users more information about the product. And then finally, the last thing that's attached to an offer is an artifact. You can think of this as the container for your binary, your build that's actually going to be delivered to your users. Um, that's, that's the packaging that it comes in, the artifact. All right, so there is one more concept that we need to go over before we dive into the demo, um, and that's sandboxes. By default, every product that you create is going to gen be generated with three sandboxes, dev, stage, and live. And also by default, when you first create your product, you're going to see a couple of, of entities that are in there um, by default, and you'll, you'll start your configuration here. Um, so all, all of your configuration and testing uh, happens in Dev Sandbox. This is where you're going to be editing, configuring, changing things. Um, and, and once you're ready uh, to submit, then you'll select which things you want to push into Stage Sandbox. And we call this a push to stage. Um, and when you do the push to stage, essentially what happens is we're copying whatever you're selecting in Dev Sandbox into Stage Sandbox. And the key purpose of Stage Sandbox is for you to validate and submit um, your, your submission. Uh, this is also where the Epic Games team will be reviewing your submission. Now, you can continue to edit and add in Dev Sandbox, um, even though you've got stuff in Stage. Um, but just note that in order for those, for those changes to make it into Stage, you'll just need to push to Stage again. OK, so you've, you've pushed to Stage. Everything looks good. You've gotten an approval from, from the Epic Games team. Uh, it's time to push to Live. And essentially, the same thing happens again when you push from Stage to Live. It's basically a direct copy from Stage into Live. Um, and the, the thing to consider here is that anything in live is considered public information. So you'll want to make sure that, that, that your information is ready. Now, there are some controls to control visibility of stuff in live, but the, all of the entities in here are, are public. Okay, so with that, I think we're ready to hop into the demo. Uh, give me just a sec. All right. So um, you're ready to sign up for an organization. We're, we're going to take you through the, the entire step here. If you go to dev.epicgames.com, you'll see this nice blue button up in the upper right hand corner that'll take you to Dev Portal. Now, I've already got an organization set up uh, just for ease of the demo, but you can easily create one today. So I'm, I'm going to show you how that works. Um, you can also belong to multiple organizations if you want. Um, so I'm, I'm going to create a new one inside Unreal Demo Org. You can add information about your privacy policy and your support email. Not required at this time. So I'm going to create the organization. And I've got a new dashboard. Um, it's empty right now. I don't have any new products. Uh, but that's going to be my next step. Now, if I want to add my team, I can do that in organization settings. I'm not going to dig into that too much here. Um, let's focus on creating a product. So when I create a product, I'm going to give it a name. Let's see, we'll call it the Inside Unreal Product. Okay. I can optionally add an image. I'm going to skip that for now. And what's happening right now is all that stuff we just talked about is getting generated. That was pretty quick, actually. Um, 
So I see my products here. I've got a number of different areas that I can work on. Some of these might look familiar if you're already set up in, uh, in Dev Portal. These will, these will look, look familiar to you. Um, but I can dive into the Epic Game Store section. And the very first thing that I'm going to see here is uh, to update my organization settings. Now, this is really important to note. Um, in order for you to use the, self -pub the publishing tools, you, your organization needs to be what's called an enterprise type. And that just basically means that the owner of your organization can act as a legal signatory on behalf of all members of the organization. So that's that's a requirement in order to get into the publishing tools. So I'm going to update and continue. And then the next step in the process is to review and sign our distribution agreement. Um, so definitely take some time to review this. Uh, you can always come back and, and download it uh, later if you need to, but this is required to review before you proceed. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll Always the most step. exciting part of any live demo, right, Gwenny? Very the... exciting part. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to accept it. And then we also have an optional email sharing agreement. Um, if you would like to like to be able to contact users who opt in at the time that they purchase your product, um, you will need to accept this agreement. Um, but you can also skip it if that's uh, if not something that you want to do. So I'm actually gonna, going to accept it. Okay. So that's that's the first part, um, and now I, I see this overview of of, uh, of what I need to consider when um, when setting up my product. So we give you all of the stuff that I talked about before around our distribution requirements. Um, there's some key information here that links out to our documentation. I also want to call out uh, that we have a brand new part of the developer community um, that's also a resource for you as well. So we really encourage you to go sign up there, ask us questions. The product team is all good is all going to be there, um, and and we're excited to hear your feedback and your questions. So um, be sure to check that out. But also check out um, uh, our our distribution requirements um, as well as uh, be aware of our submission fee and uh, product questionnaire, as well as um, get your paperwork ready uh, for filling out the tax and payout information. So this all looks good to me. I'm going to click next. Um, and now it is time to pay my submission fee. Um, so basically, this just pops up my regular old Epic, uh, Epic wallet. Um, so I have a test wallet. Um, I'm going to pay this pay this $100 fee. Again, this is per product and it is recoupable. And now the fee is paid and I'm gonna proceed to the questionnaire. Now, it's okay if you don't know all the answers to the questionnaire up front. Really, like, like I mentioned before, this is intended to give us an idea of what you have planned so that we can make sure that we're there to support you. Um, so I'm just gonna put in some, some uh, junk information here. I do have a more set up product that we can look at in a couple of minutes, but um, let's see. So I am, I don't know when I'm going to launch. I think it's probably going to be in December of this year. Um, I've never released this product before. Um, yes, I'm going to launch on multiple storefronts. It's not an online multiplayer game. Uh, it will not have any in-app purchases. Uh, it's going to be on Windows to start. I don't use blockchain. Um, something really important to note, if you do have a pro product that it does use blockchain, we require an additional agreement. So we'll have to reach out to you um, before you can proceed. Um, and I don't yet support achievements on other storefronts. Oh, but maybe I plan to. I'm going to put that as a yes. And then I don't have localization. I'm going to need to take advantage of that free service that you all provide. Um, my product has not yet been rated. I do want to re release in Australia, Brazil, and Russia, and South Korea. I'm going to give my, I'm actually going to skip over this, um, but I, you need to provide an email address if, if, I, if you want the, the, EG, the Epic Games Korea team to get in touch there. Um, and no, this is not a game as a service. 
And then uh, this last one um, really just gives us an indicator that you'd like to like to participate in making the tools better. Um, so I'm going to hit yes here. And now I'm ready to go. We're, we're headed off to the publishing dashboard. Um, so this is really our mission control uh, for, for all things um, that Epic Games Store product related. Um, you can see up here, the first thing I want to call your attention to is uh, the tax and the, this call out to complete your tax and payout information. Um, if you click this button, it'll take you straight to where you need to go. But I, it is really important to keep in mind that this, depending on where you are in the world, this can take up to 10 business days. It tends to take a little less time in the U.S., um, but you'll definitely want to plan for this um, and get this done as soon as possible. Now, since this product is completely empty, there's nothing in here, um, I'm just going to spend a minute ta just taking a look over here at the checklist. You'll see that I've completed the initial onboarding, but I have a lot left to do. Um, and each one of these links will, will give me a kind of a pointer to, to what I need to complete in order to get my page live, in order to launch my products, and then important call outs uh, for configuring cross-play um, account service and achievements if they're, if they're necessary for my product. I also have some pointers down to some key resources down here. These link out to our documentation site, uh, which I encourage you all to check out. Um, and then we have a product overview uh, here of what, what's shown up in dev stage and live. So some really nice, nice widgets uh, to, to give you an overview of where your product's at. Now, I've already done some pre-configuration of another product, so I'm going to skip over there. Um, you'll see I've, I've got a lot of green chat bars here, so it, which didn't take me too long to set up. Um, but hopping down into some of these more detailed areas of configuration um, down from the dashboard, let's start with release management. Now, this should look somewhat familiar. Um, this really just represents what is in my dev sandbox, what is in my stage sandbox, and what is in my live sandbox. Now, I have not pushed from dev to stage yet, so you'll see that all of the things that I've configured are just sitting in dev. Um, but since they're ready, I do have the option to push to stage. Now, you'll see that this option is grayed out until you've, you've filled in those at least baseline requirements of configuration. Um, so you'll need to get that done first before you can push to stage, then you can validate in stage and then submit for review. And then once that's approved, um, you, you'll be able to push to live. If you do have issues found, those will show up both here and on your product dashboard. So um, we'll give you clear pointers as to where you need to go in order to address the issues. Um, so that's that's release management, really high level glimpse of where where am I in in the in the cycle of setting up my product. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is your store product settings. Um, and now remember, if you remember back to that diagram, your product settings apply to all of the offers within your product. Um, Product configuration, regions, and ratings both live at the product level. So let's take a look at exactly what types of config we're talking about here. Um, so we drill into this area of product configuration. Uh, something kind of cute to note, we, when you hover over these different areas, you can see how those reflect in a little mock-up of your page. So product details are gonna primarily show up um, in the core metadata of your product page. Um, so you can see here, Gwynny's Garden is my product. Um, I've got a brief description of the product, uh, including the genres, uh, the features, product icon, um, you, the, which it languages, languages I support in the build. Um, I've got my legal footer information that applies to all of, all of my offers, as well as a privacy link uh, where users can get in contact with me for support. Um, this is going to be the URL for my product. Uh, something really important to note is that right now, um, when you first set up your product, that URL is going to be set with the name of your product, um, and and it's not changeable at this time. So make sure when you're first setting it up that you're ready to ready to go with that um, with that name. Uh, and we are working on being able to change that very soon. Um, the last thing here is I. Uh, 
the, your developer name and publisher information. So that that is the high level product config. Um, let's go back and take a look at specifications. This should all look familiar here, all key details that my players need to know about what machine they need in order to play my game, um, as well as information about which, uh, which platforms I support. So right now I'm Windows only, I have Mac turned off, um, and you can see here that, that uh, this, this data will show up down at the footer of the page. Okay, I can also optionally add social media information. I can add a banner that shows up underneath my main carousel, and I can customize the theming if I so desire. All right, so that is product information. Let's take a look at regions and ratings. This is one that I'm super excited about. Now, I've actually already gone through the process to get a rating for this product. Um, you can see here on the left, we have a breakdown of all of the different regions that um, we support release in. Um, so you can expand these and check them out. Uh, these are the, the relevant categories for each region. Um, and when you click into ratings, uh, the, the first time that you're gonna go into this, it's gonna ask you a really simple set of questions uh, about your product. Um, like, do you already have an IARC rating? If you don't, would you like an IARC rating? Um, if you do, then you'll go through uh, the IARC form. Um, and uh, that really does not take very long. It's maybe, maybe five to 10 minutes, depending on how complex your product is. And within seconds, um, you'll come back here and see your ratings populate within your product. Um, so you can see here, I've got IARC ratings for all of the regions in, with, in which IARC uh, supports ratings. Um, and, then, uh, and then I can additionally add additional rate, ratings that, I, that IARC does not support. Now, something really key to note, if you have gotten a traditional rating for your product um, that uh, in addition to an IARC rating, you do need to, uh, to upload that here. And you can do that really simply by clicking on the rating and replacing it with a traditional rating. That is, that is required though, so remember, remember to do that. Okay, so that's ratings. Let's hop over to regions. Um, region ratings for uh, understandable purposes are very linked. Um, so in the region section, you'll see that by default, we've got all regions that Epic uh, Game Store operates in checked with the exception of South Korea. I don't currently have a Grok rating, so this option will not be clickable. Um, the same is true of a couple of other regions, uh, but if you get an IR rating, then you'll be able to check those boxes. Um, but this is basically a, a way for me to decide where, where do I want this product to be available in, and I can easily toggle these options on and off. Okay, so that is regions and ratings. Let's talk a bit about offers. Now, offers sit, if you remember, sit a click below um, the store settings. So these are the, the things that users actually buy. And right now I have a um, my base game offer, uh, which was created by default when I created this product. I haven't added any additional ones, but I can do that up here. So I might not go through this whole process here because I like having my my product ready to push. Um, but you can see here, I can choose what kind of offer I want to create. And uh, let's say that I, I was creating an add-on, uh, we would see both the, the offer created for the add-on and the, the, the artifact to go with it get created automatically. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna leave that for now. And let's just dig into the base game configuration. So a whole bunch of other config uh, here um, on my offer level. Similar fields um, that, you, that you'll recognize from the product level. And that's that's actually something that you can directly inherit down from the product level to the offer level. So especially for base game, um, just click this button and it'll downfill all of the all of the data that you filled in at the product level. Um, if, if you do have differences between your offer level information and your product information, though, this will give you the flexibility to configure that. Um, so uh, 
I actually have an FAQ page that I'm going to create because I've decided that this product is in early access. And um, so we've got a nice little call out there and we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Um, we see all the similar genre information about uh, this product that we configured at the product level. So those are the high level details. Next, um, let's take a look at price. Uh, so I've selected an Epic delivered price tier, um, which is basically just a price tier that is, it, I can select from this drop down, and it has an automatically generated uh, corresponding currencies for in all of the, the regions that we support. So you can see those populate automatically. Now, if I wanted to um, create my own price tier, so I'm going to have my own base price and I uh, and my own calculated currencies for each region. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to do that, but for now, I'm gonna uh, just select one of these Epic delivered price tiers. Um, so that's price, pretty simple. And then um, I'm saving dates for last. So let's go into artifact settings. Um, so in artifact settings, again, like, like we were talking about before, your artifact is the box, the package in which you're going to place your binary. Um, so uh, you can you, basically there's a, another tool called the build patch tool, and you can read all about this on our documentation portal um, where, where you're, it's a command line tool that you'll use in order to actually upload your build. Um, so I've already done that, and then I have tagged that build. Um, with uh, with the appropriate platform, um, and but this information is surfaced at the offer level, uh, so it's just showing me, yeah, you've got your build ready, you're ready to go. So we'll look at we'll look at the artifact in a second. Um, this is just showing me the connection between the artifact and the offer. So I'm going to go back. Uh, Images. Okay, so images, um, these images that I've uploaded are used at, at, on a variety of different places on the storefront. Um, so these are our, my key, basically my key art for this offer. Um, I've got landscape and portrait, and then I can either use these, these general images again uh, as my library images, or I can upload custom library images if I want. I'm going to leave these as is. And then finally, dates. Now, there is a lot of power packed into the dates configuration. Um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time here. Um, so th there's two different ways that you can go about filling in dates. Um, the one that you'll see by default is this guided experience. So the first time that you ever come into this, you're going to see this questionnaire style um, experience here. Um, so first question, have you previously released this offer or released this particular offer on PC or Mac? I have not. Um, when do you want this offer to be discovered? This just means viewable on the storefront. Um, and I have a very specific viewable date. I'm going live on April Fool's Day at noon. Uh, I can also um, set it, set it to, to immediately become visible when I push to live sandbox, but I'm, I'm going to set it for a very specific time. And then when this, uh, when is this offer officially launching? Not totally sure yet. I think it's going to be in 2024, um, probably by the end of the year. So you can see, I have a couple of options here. I can choose to display it by day, by month, by quarter, by year. Um, if I have it estimated, just some flexibility will show you what, what the users see on the front end. Um, you can also select that you've got a really specific date. Um, this is also changeable. So it, you can go from an estimated date to a specific date once, you, once you've settled on your release plan. Um, that's totally possible. Uh, I think the only thing to note is that if you have a, if you already go live um, and your specific dates in the past, you can't change it because um, it's because it's already it's already happened if you're already in in, in live. Um, another thing to note is that if you select specific date, we are going to require that you add a binary to the artifact attached to this offer. So. Um, if you, if you want to just publish a page, you don't want to have to add a build, your build's not ready. Um, it's recommended that you add, uh, you add an estimated date and then you can either select a really specific estimated date or, uh, you can select a more general one. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep this as, um, 
sometime in 2024. We'll see. Um, finally, uh, for some offer types, you'll, you'll be able to set an expiration date. That's not possible for a base game offer type. Um, we're going to finish and save. And you can see over here, um, it actually closed me out, but you can see over here is a nice little preview of like, what is, what's going to, the user going to see, um, when, when they, uh, when, when they, you know, with this offer go, going through these stages. Um, so, so today uh, there's nothing, um, but uh, my, my page is gonna become discoverable on April 1st um, and uh, launch date in, sometime in 2024. So this is a nice hint uh, to, to make sure that you've got the configuration set up just right. So that is dates. Um, now we also have some optional information around included offers. Uh, this this is a base game, so I I don't have a, an included offer specifically with this. Um, but if I were setting up an addition and I wanted to include some DLC and the base game, then I could do that all within here. Um, you can also set specific region information for an offer. So if I can either say, yep, I'm going to use the exact same regions that I set at the product level, or you can customize them at the offer at the offer level. So if I say I don't want to release this particular this particular uh, offer in a particular country, then I can I can customize that. I'm going to leave it as is. And the last thing here to call out is uh, cloud save. And um, you can also configure cloud save for this offer here. Now, um, we also have some really handy dandy links down here to other parts of the configuration. Um, including uh, managing localization, we'll go over that in a minute, and generating keys uh, for the offer. So we're going to put a pin in that and come back to it later. Okay, so my offer is ready to, for stage. Let's look at the page, the fun part. So when I go into pages, this is another thing that you'll see created by default um, when you first uh, when you first create your product, your product homepage. This is you can think of this as the sister page to your base game. These things are connected. Um, so in my product homepage, I, we've got um, another little preview here to show you where on the page does this stuff actually apply. Um, so starting with the carousel, uh, this is a, you're basically your hero images that um, users, it's the first blush at your product. Uh, so we want to encourage you to put as many big, beautiful images in here as possible. It's best practice to add a video in the first position of your carousel. Um, so when I open this up, you'll see that I do have that. I've got my, my nice little video to start and I have some additional tester images. Um, I can add them. Uh, add more, add more videos. I can also drag and drop to change the position of these um, if I so desire. And then the second major section is the about section. Um, I, I did a pretty poor job of filling this one in, but um, you can add multiple blocks of text, images. Um, uh, you can, if you want to do headers for different sections, you can do that. There's a lot of flexibility in your about section. Um, let's go back. You can also add additional images. These, these actually show up underneath the carousel. Um, so we sometimes call this the gallery down here underneath your about section. There's a big expandable spot, um, for you to add additional images. We do encourage that all of your great gameplay images have, uh, are uploaded in the carousel. And then if you just have a whole bunch of other stuff that you want to showcase, you can add that down into the additional images section. And then final, finally, a social preview image. Um, this doesn't actually show up on your product page. What this is for is when you share out your amazing product page on a social, um, that the, a little, little image comes with it uh, so that it shows up best in the places where users are sharing it. Um, we, we also uh, have another preview of what your, your product URL is going to look like here um, and, uh, and a jumping off point to your localization for the page specifically if you would like it. So that is pages. And we're going to touch briefly on artifacts and binaries. Um, I already alluded to it before, um, but you'll see again, I've got an auto-created artifact that came along with my base game offer. 
it is ready for stage because I, um, I, the, our, our team uploaded it for me, which is great. Uh, so when I go into the artifacts, we're going to see my artifact ID. It's assigned specifically to this um, base game. So I see the relationship there. Um, I've also got a set of instructions. So I see, I see what I uploaded and then I've got the set of instructions and credentials. I can download the tool directly from here. Um, and I can copy the command line template for this artifact specifically. So that's pretty handy. Um, I also can edit the details, uh, grab the ID if I need it. Um, useful, useful information. So that is the core of, of your product setup. And everything that I just went through, the store settings, offers, and pages, um, and, and artifacts uh, are all important parts of getting your page live initially. All of those things need to be filled out. And then you're going to build those out further um, and you know, upload your final build uh, for review um, as you're getting ready to launch. Um, I also want to call out a couple of more sections that are, that are really important here. The first is access keys. So this is going to be your hub for creating all of your keys, um, not just dev and testing keys, um, but also press and promo keys um, and uh, retail keys. Um, so you can very easily generate your keys here. Um, you generate them by sandbox. So I, uh, you, you cannot use a key across sandboxes. Um, so I'm, I'm going to generate them for dev. I can choose which offer I'm generating them for. If I had more offers, they would show up here. Um, and then I can uh, choose how, give it, give my batch a name. I'm going to say testing keys um, for testing. Uh, I'm only able to generate testing keys in these in the private sandboxes. Um, so dev and stage, uh, only testing keys are allowed. And the only users who are going to be able to redeem those keys are users who are in your organization, part of your team. Um, it's only once we get into live sandbox that you'll be able to unlock these press and promo keys and retail keys. Um, I'm going to set this as a single use. I'm going to say I want five. Um, and then I can set the, the timeline that they'll be available. Okay. 1 p.m. Make it March 10th. Okay. And then I can also select which regions I want them to be uh, applicable in. Again, since uh, South Korea is not available to me, um, because I haven't uploaded my graph grading, I can't check that one. So when I generate my keys, uh, this uh, I'm going to see this little key request here. By default, you can generate test keys up to 5,000 without any sort of um, approval needed from, uh, from Epic. Um, but retail keys, uh, you will see go through an approval process. And we're, we're usually pretty quick on, on approving those. Um, so just, just a heads up there. Um, I'll be able to download these keys uh, and, and um, distribute them to my testers as needed. I'm not going to do that now, but uh, that's pretty easy to do. Okay, so the last, um, one of the last sections that I want to show you here is localization. Um, this is really exciting. This is basically the area of configuration that's going to have your product show up the best it possibly can in every locale that the store supports, which um, right now I think we support about 16 languages on the store. Um, so you can see here that all of the, the entities, so the offer, the store settings, and the page that have text that I have input um, show up in this localization menu. And that's because I'm going to be given the opportunity to customize them for, for each locale. And the way that this works is um, when you when you go into a particular entity, um, you'll uh, you'll see which which locale it's already um, has already been applied. Now, since I've already done some work to to localize for for all of these different languages, you're not, um, I'm not showing you the empty state. But for example, if we look into French, um, you can see that I've already applied. Uh, 
some French translations. Um, and I, I've also done that for product home and product configurations. Um, now, let's say that you wanted to create new localization. Um, you can do that uh, really easily just by downloading this template. And what this does is generate a CSV file that takes all of your English strings, puts them in a CSV, and then you're able to input your localization um, and then re-upload it into the system. Um, so when you, when you upload it, uh, we do have a really nice UI that'll tell you if you have issues, here's what you need to address. Um, but uh, this way your team can, can work on the localization offline and re-upload re it. Um, uh, and that's specifically for text, text localization. Now, I, I mentioned earlier about Epic service to provide free localization. Really, if you wanna take advantage of that, all you do is download the template. Um, once you've completed and finalized your English strings, you're gonna submit a case um, with that template attached and uh, request localization. And the localization team will then translate it into whichever languages it is that you wanna support. We do recommend translating it for all languages. Um, and then you'll get it back and you re-upload it into the system and all of the text is localized. Um, you can also see a history of your localization. You can see I was having some trouble with mine earlier. Um, so I've got a history of, of, uh, of the uploads that I did where I had issues, um, but I managed to clear those up pretty quickly. Um, and I now have eight supported locales. Now, the last thing that I want to highlight with localization is that we also support localized media, which is pretty cool. Um, so, for example, if I go into one of my locales, I can see that I can add local localized uh, versions of the media that I uploaded in English if I so desire. So let's say I have a really amazing carousel image that I want to show specifically to my audience who speaks German. Um, I can upload that here uh, and anybody with a preferred locale of German is going to see that image, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, by default, if you don't do that localization, you'll just see these little default chiclets uh, show up here um, and everybody will get whatever you uploaded for English. All right, so that's localization, and we have one more area to cover, which is custom price tiers. Now, I tr I touched on that earlier. Custom price tiers are basically a way of giving you super control over what price your, your offer shows up uh, as in what region. Um, and the way that you do this is to create a custom price tier. Um, so I'm going to give it a Gwynny's. Oh, I already did this, apparently. Gwynny's price tier. Um, I have the option of choosing one of the Epic price tiers, um, and then and then I can edit uh, the regional currency if I want to. So, for example, let's say I really wanted to call out Brazil and make it five instead of um, five thirty nine. Uh, just a note here: we will show you what the delta is between um, the standard price, that's the Epic delivered price tier. Um, price and uh, and whatever price you set. This is really just intended to give you a, a like a little check because this is very detail oriented work, um, and so we want to make sure that we're we're showing you like, hey, this is this is our recommended setting. Definitely not required, but just a, a visual cue for you to know what's um, you know do a scan and make sure you didn't make any mistakes with your price tier. Um, the other option that you have, aside from choosing one of the Epic delivered price tiers, is to do a totally soup to nuts, um, uh, self-created price tier. So I'm going to convert it to a different base price, um, and that will give me total control over all currencies um, and uh, without any any uh, restriction on what the USD price is set. So I can set this to. $12 if I want, um, and then I'll go line by line and add um, add the additional currencies. We do not show the delta if you choose this, choose this option. Now, once I have um, set my price tier, um, and actually I'm going to go back to the, to the super easy version, and I'm just going to adjust this to 25 cents. Um, I don't have to make any changes if I don't want to. 13 digits before and 13 digits after. Whoops. All right. Not sure what that one's for. Um, 
Nine. Here we go. Um, okay, live demos. Gotta love it. Um, so I'm, I've edited my custom price here. I'm going to submit it. Now the key here, really what we're doing on the Epic side is just making sure that your price tier doesn't look really off. Um, you are entirely in control of the price that you set here, but we're going to do a quick spot check. If we see something that looks a little bit awry, um, we'll send it back to you to be like, Hey, we noticed this. Um, like, are you sure you want to proceed? You can either be like, Oh yeah. I, like that totally miss miss this detail or um or you can proceed uh, uh with you know and say it's all good um and after your price tier is approved then you can associate it with that offer that you want to attach it to um you can use a price tier with uh, with multiple offers inside your product um so just just remember that uh price tier is independent from your offer uh, and you'll need to make that connection Okay, so that is the whole story of configuration. Um, there's a lot that we didn't go into around bespoke uh, bespoke setup for different, different configurations of offers. Um, there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of power in these tools. Um, and so uh, we encourage you to dig in, we encourage you to take a look documentation and also join the community um, to, to get more ideas about, about different setups of offers and how to approach setting things up in certain ways because um, there's, there's a huge amount of flexibility here. Um, so once, like we talked about before, now that my offers are all my offers, my store settings, my pages, my artifact is all ready to go, I've got this lovely push to stage button which I can click and when I do that, I can select which off which things I want to send um, to stage. Now I'm going to select everything because I need all of this stuff in order to get my page live. Um, even though my 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 product is not ready to launch, my page is ready to launch. Um, so I'm going to need all of these things in order to do that. Now let's say you're configuring a bunch of extra offers that you're not ready to launch pages for you'll be able to uncheck those and we'll we'll show you indicators of uh of which um uh, of which things have dependencies between them here um so at this point i'm going to push to stage oh boy here we go and this may take a minute, um, like we talked about before, that basically what's happening behind the scenes here is we're making a full copy of the things that you selected from dev into stage. So that just takes a little bit of time, um, especially for some of the meteor configurations. But once it is done, all of those uh, entities that I filled out in dev um, will, will show up in stage. Uh, the, the only difference is that I won't be able to interact with them in stage. They are read only in stage. Um, and that's really by design. All of your configuration needs to happen in dev. Um, and, it's, and it's really a spot check, double check that happens in stage. It looks like we're still going here. Um, but I... Uh, I, I will I will say that once once these things all populate, this button submit for review will be available. Um, I can I can either submit it right away if I'm if I'm feeling confident that everything looks good, or I'm um, going back to our keys concept. I can generate uh, key testing keys in uh, in stage um, to further validate that everything looks good. Um, so, hey, look at that. You'll see I've got uh, a, now what was only in dev is now in stage and I can select this offer, generate a key for it and just do my final validation that everything looks good. My submission's ready to go um, in stage. Um, you'll see nothing's in live yet because I haven't take, gone that far. Let's go back and check out our release management. Looks like it's still pushing, which is totally okay. Um, this should resolve pretty quickly. Hey, there it is. Um, and oh, look at that. I do have one issue. So I'm going to need to check check, check into that before I go. There are some automated um, errors that we will only show you in the stage sandbox. Um, but I, so I'll need to go resolve that um, before I can submit. Um, you'll see I've got this nice view issues button that'll point me straight to the problem. Um, and I can go edit that in dev and then um, push it to stage again. 
And then once this shows up as a clean slate, um, then I'll see this submit and uh, the Epic team has it. Um, now, if if uh, if there's some an, an issue that the Epic team finds, um, this this will show up in much the same way. We'll we'll have key callouts with details about um, about what what you need to address before you can proceed. If everything looks good and your submission is approved, instead of this button, you're going to see a big old push to live button, um, and that's when things really get real. Uh, and you'll be able to push from stage to live sandbox and put your put your product out into the world. And that's that's kind of it for today. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for walking through that. That was such a fantastic demo. <laughs> that answered so many of the questions that chat had just through the demo itself. That was very thorough. So incredible job. Um, well, speaking of questions from chat, there are <laughs> so many. <laughs> and I would love to just dive straight in if um, both of you are up for that. Yeah, let's do it. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly just underscore one thing that Gwynny mentioned. That was obviously a, a super thorough demo that covered a lot of stuff. If folks like have any questions or maybe they're kind of like not sure um, uh, how a certain thing works, we have really thorough documentation. Um, we have a link up there in the top nav of the dev portal that Gwynny was just using. Don't be afraid to click on that link and dive in. It covers everything from like you know, these are the tech requirements, these are our content guidelines, prohibited content, and also things like marketing best practices. So like dive into that and read through it. And I think that'll put you in a, a really good spot to get started. Yeah, I, I wanna say one more thing there, which is, which is just to emphasize, join the community. Um, mm -hmm. We are so excited yeah. to welcome you into the developer community. We wanna connect with you, we wanna hear from you. Like get in there, ask us questions. That's what it's there for. And and share your insights with others as well. Yes, please do join in. Give us your thoughts and opinions as always. It's also just nice to have people in the community giving us feedback. So please make sure to do that. All right. Well, I'm ready to dive into here. Um, I'm going to ans uh, ask these questions just to both of you. And then whoever wants to grab it, go for it. Or if both of you... Uh, want to chime in, please feel free. We'll just kind of, we'll rapid fire through some of these. There's a few that were covered in the demo. Um, I'll still ask them just in case if anybody missed it. Um, there, you know, it'll normally be a quick yes or no, but just in case they miss some information, want to make sure everyone has everything that they need. So first off, this was one that was answered, but um, will the store support early access titles? Yes, you just have to have an FAQ page. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, then Mr. Square Pig was also asking, does the EGS have price localization, which you showed that it did, which is fantastic. That was one, that was a really big point um, that I was particularly impressed with because whatever, I have to do less than a calculator is better for me. So, <laughs> uh, uh, and next real, up from... real... Oh. yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say real quickly on the on the early access question. Um, one thing that I mentioned at the top of the stream was content hubs, which is a new uh, feature we have coming out later in the year. I think that's going to be a really good way for early access developers to message to their community, like those iterative updates that are always coming out. Um, so yeah, we definitely support early access today, but it's going to be a, a much better user experience down the road once we launch that. Um. TJ was wondering, will EGS tools help with producing new game patches? And also, can a multiplayer game be published exclusively to EGS? I'll, uh, so the, I'll answer the, the, the... Go ahead, yeah. I'll, I'll answer the, the multiplayer question, since that's more of like a, a, like a policy question. Um, so we, we, we do have a... a, a a store requirement that any game that's available on additional PC stores that has multiplayer has to support cross-play between all the different available PC stores. So conceivably, if the game is 
only available on EGS and it's multiplayer, you could absolutely do that. Um, but you know, we leave that decision entirely up to the developers, whether they want to release only on EGS or across every available platform. And Tina, could you maybe repeat that first part of the question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, will EGS tools help with producing new game patches? Producing new game patches. We might need to get back to that one. Um, I, I, we do have a way of, of patching patching your build in live. So if you push something to live and you need to do a hot patch, um, that's, that's something that the tools allow. Um, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure if that answers the question. Awesome. Uh, so this did come up a little bit as well. Is the $100 per, per title returned once the game makes a certain amount of sales or revenue? Yes, yes, $1,000. Then you can read more about that in the documentation. Awesome. Uh, next up, Mr. Squarepeg said, my company is a DBA. Is that also supported? DBA, yeah, doing business as um, I believe we do support those, um, and that 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 shouldn't be any problem with the the new agreement flow that we have. Yes, awesome. And marketed film is wondering how does DLC or sub assets such as art books um, rather than binary updates get represented in this workflow. Yeah, so so um all all of the all of the things that I showed you around offers, um you can create additional offers and include those as part of your submission, um either bundled with other things. Um so if you're doing a season pass or if you're doing an addition, um you can bundle those things together. Um, or individually. Um, so you'll go through the exact same process um, in order to update your product and add additional offers um, as you did to push things initially. You'll just go through that process of configure it in dev, select it, move it to stage, review, and then move it to live. Fantastic. And as kind of a follow up to that, I did see another question um, wondering is there a way to have different versions as well similar to how there's a standard or a deluxe or a legendary version of the game would that be structured in a similar way yeah you'd probably do that as an addition um and i uh, and that that would basically allow you to to take your base game and attach you know extra extra goodies to it um and have those have those either own purchasable package for sure um Anani Moose is wondering, can they attach any EULAs themselves? Ooh, good question. Like a custom EULA. Does that mm -hmm. sounds like it? Um, yeah, so that's actually not something that we support directly in the tools right now. Um, I think we are we are looking into it though. Awesome. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned on that one. Um, summon game dev is wondering, can we add demos for the game before the game is for sale? Good question. Um, yes, you can. I, I think your, your base page for your, for your game needs to be live in order to do that. So you need to have it in like a coming soon state. But you can absolutely add we, actually a demo offer is an entirely different offer type and you can uh, can send that up um, into live with uh, along with your your base game page. Awesome. Da, da, da. Making sure I'm not re asking same questions. <laughs> um, Hugh Adventure was wondering. Um, if you made a major mistake or wanted to delete an organization for some odd reason, is there a section for major changes like that, such as change logs or anything? Delete an organization. Um, 
I don't think that that's something that you can do uh, self-service, but I think you can always reach out to our team. There's a there's a little support link that you'll see in the main navigation of dev.epicgames.com, um, and that'll take you to a place where you can raise a private question. Um, so if you have a really big thing that you need help with, um, like deleting an organization, uh, you can you can reach out to us, and we've got a whole team that's that's here to help you. And then, sort of a follow up to that. Um, Sumna Game Dev was wondering, can we rename the project or game if we are currently using a working title but have not finalized the game's name yet? Yeah, great question. So right now, you cannot do that in the tools, but if you reach out to us, we can help you do it. Um, so if you're, you know, you set it up as a working title um, and I, and you know, you're, it's go time and you need to change it, um, just again, create a private case, we can help We can help do that for you. We are um, one of the very next things on our roadmap. If you check out the roadmap page in the community, that is that is something we're working on right now. Um, so we recognize how key that is um, and we'll hope to be able to add it soon. Awesome, very good to hear. Um, Anani Moose is wondering, are there any plans to allow a free beta weekend or other things to allow for stress testing? Uh, we don't have anything planned, but we're we're always open to ideas. So if you have suggestions, um, join that community. Tell us. Awesome. There you go. Um, Joshy Zombie is wondering, with these access keys for testers, do we have to go through brand approval before we can start doing testing? Um, they're just a solo dev looking to do some multiplayer testing soon across a handful of authorized accounts. Yeah, um, so there's two different ways to approach that. You can either add them directly to your org um, and provision them on a specific product. Um, you, sh you, they, you should be able to add them as team members to your org. There's also something called um, player groups, uh, which you can read more about in the dev documentation that allow you to basically do the same thing um, and have an additional control and configuration over um, which users can access uh, access your product in, in those private sandboxes. Very cool. So next, Golden Glowmaster. Love that name. <laughs> what is the difference for the agreement when you include blockchain into your project? Mm, great question. Sean, can you speak to that? Uh, sorry, I was distracted by Twitch chat for one second. Dina, can you repeat that <laughs> for me? Absolutely. Uh, there's, a, the there's a very for... vibrant, there's a really vibrant discussion going on right now about whether Gwynny has a bookshelf or if that's just a really precarious stack of books. So that's, <laughs> it's consuming the chat right now. Sorry. We need to know. <laughs> Not the first time I've gotten that question. <laughs> <laughs> It is indeed a very nice bookshelf that I love. It's got like like shelves like this. So you just like smash the books up in them and it looks just like a precarious stack of books. <laughs> Living life extremely dangerously. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that was a question because I was also yeah. wondering. So glad to get that out of the way. We needed to know. You're asking, yeah, you're asking about blockchain, right? Yeah. What is the difference for the agreement when a blockchain is included in the project? So for blockchain, that's just an extra uh, agreement that we have you um, agree to on top of the the standard distribution agreement, and essentially it just covers some you know some terms around um, around the the way that you you know, the way that you monetize that title on the store and also the, the, the level of information that's, that's shared with the, with the audience. So think of that as just like an extra, uh, I think we call it a writer, um, but it's just an extra page that we tack onto the existing agreement. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not super lengthy, but we wanna add that extra bit of coverage because blockchain is sort of a, a new frontier. For sure. Yeah, I Thanks. think the other thing to add there is that if you have blockchain as a part of your products, you you must have a rating associated with your product. You cannot launch an unrated 
an unrating game without um, their, uh, you know, with blockchain. So that's another consideration. Awesome. Very good point. Um, Lamento is wondering, will the store have an appeal option in case of rejection? Yes. Um, that's actually going to be another thing that we'd like you to reach out via a case um, and uh, and basically just provide additional context on why you feel that the, re the, the rejection um, reason is, is invalid and we will absolutely take it from there. Awesome. Uh, rewrite, definitely slaughtered that one, but <laughs> how do you access the self-publishing tools with an organization that's already made? Great question. Yeah, so um, so right now, by default, if you have an existing org, maybe you're using Epic Online Services, um, well, you have two options. You can either create a net new org, um, and then any product that you create inside that org, in the, in the new org, will automatically have um, access to the publishing tools by default. Or, again, you can reach out to us, and we can do some configuration in order to get your existing org enabled. Um, one thing to note is that we are that it, it will take a little bit longer. Um, we're we're uh, working out some some details of enabling existing products um, in to be able to use the publishing tools. And um, so, if maybe you've got a test product in there um, that you haven't used a lot, um, you'll probably just want to move on to a new product. Makes sense. Um... Dark Squirrel is wondering if the game requires another platform login like Steam, can it still um, be self-published? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, Title is wondering if they'll be able to generate discount codes. Um, that's another great question. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Sean. I was just gonna say, um, uh, Self-service discounting is, is not something that's going to be currently available in the tool as of today, but it is it's definitely something that we're working on because we know that um, discounting periods um, is something that a, a lot of devs rely on. It's a huge part of their game sales strategy. So that is something that we're going to be, uh, we'll be releasing down the road. Awesome. Yeah, and um, in lieu of that, if you have, if you want to apply a discount to your products, again, please just reach out to us directly, and and we can mm -hmm. we can take it from there. But we are we are the team is like working on that right now. Um, <laughs> it's in process. Yeah. Awesome. So there is still the option for them to do that now. It's just they need to reach out to you in order to get that set up. Yes. Yeah, there's awesome. just that little little extra manual step as of now, but in the future, it'll all be self-service. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> that is the actual name, is wondering, how are self-returns handled? Are returns based on a time window or things like that? Yeah, um, so... But Epic has, we have a set of um, return policies uh, and and depending on the offer type that you select, those those will be predefined. Yep. You can actually learn more about it. So if you go to like any store page where the game is available now, on the right side below the buy button, it'll have a little field called refund type. Um, and you can click that little question mark and that'll take you to the whole page that covers our refund policy. Awesome. Waffle Pimp is wondering, is there a minimum monthly amount a game has to make before there are any payouts? I believe, the I believe there is. is yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but that'll all be in the in the um, in the agreement uh, when you first uh, when you first join either that or the um, the the tax. Well, it wouldn't be in the tax interview. I, I believe it would be in that that first agreement. Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head either. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Square Peg is wondering, can we have beta branches for our games as well? Not yet. No, that's not something that we have. Um, 
yet. Oh, okay. I actually just got a Slack message. The uh, the minimum uh, revenue is a hundred dollars. Um, before we uh, before we can do a payout during each payout period. Okay. There you go. Fresh off the press. <laughs> Um, and then Dark Squirrel is wondering when using the EOS plugin, will there be a dedicated server token for authentication without multiple accounts? I don't think I can answer that one. It might be that Rajan can in text. Yes, Rajan can definitely answer that one in the chat, I believe. So fantastic. And then David Macklin just popped in wondering if the revenue split is still 1288 for Unreal Engine, which yes, yes it is. Fantastic magical number. <laughs> all right. Well, we have caught up on all of the questions, which is awesome. That truly was rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> that so, was great. Um, yeah. I will give everyone a moment here. If you have any other questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat uh, real quick. But in the meantime, are there any particular parts of the self-publishing tools that you think is maybe lesser known, but would be very important for you know any of the viewers to know? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I feel like Gwynnie kind of covered every last inch, inch of it during that demo. Is very good. <laughs> I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. We didn't go through the IARC flow, which which is one of my favorite flows. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, so definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, I think we I, I think you know one thing we really didn't look at um, because it's it's less a part of the publishing tools and more a part of Dev Portal overall, and um, is is we have a lot of options when you're setting up your team, um, and so so if you have a lot of people that that you're working with or only just a few, um, you can you can change you can bundle permissions for your team members um, to suit suit your needs. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think the other thing that we didn't really dive into uh, was the analytics. Um, since the products that I showed are not launched, um, mm -hmm. we don't have any to look at in a demo, but there are some um, really great dashboards that show you your sales report, um, your your monthly active, daily active users. Um, and so so that's that packs a real punch too. Yeah, the I, analytics is like the huge one. I can't believe I blanked on that a second ago. Um, the, that's really important because, you know, for any developer releasing their game on the store and, and trying to market it before launch, wishlisting is always going to be a, a huge part of their marketing strategy. So we have wishlisting analytics there, too. You can see how your marketing campaign is going, how the wishlisting numbers are doing day to day. Um, and that's I think that's going to be like a key thing to, to keep an eye on especially during that pre-release period. Absolutely. Um, I feel like I'm biased when it comes to this, but I always find analytics extremely interesting. <laughs> Very cool that that's included. Uh, Turning Cog is wondering, to get ratings on their games, do you send a copy to be reviewed, or is it just based on if the developer is being honest with any potential clauses that they send in? Yeah, it's it's really the latter. Um, so so you'll go through a, a pretty the, the questionnaire, it, especially if you get into um, more uh, more mature ratings. So um, you know my products is really violent or what have you. Um, the the questionnaire will get a little more lengthy and more explicit about exactly what does it include, what it, what does it depict, um, so that it can give you a really accurate to the to the minute um, digital rating. But so so yes, you need to fill that in truthfully. Um, but but the other part of this is that the 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 IARC consortium will actually review and verify periodically um, that that your ratings are. Um, are correct and they also they also can can tweak the rating so if somebody somebody from one of the rating boards looks at looks at one of um the products and and sees like oh hmm, that doesn't seem right 
um, then they, they have machinery to go and tweak the rating and that'll flow through automatically onto your product page. Awesome. But yes, important to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> please do. Please be honest. Be, be good developers and please be honest with us. <laughs> Uh, some of the game dev is wondering, can keys be revoked after they've been given out or canceled, I suppose? Oh, good question. I think I'm going to ask Doug to answer that one. And feels like a Doug chat. question to me. Yeah. He'll be able to, he'll be able to tackle that one in a big way. Awesome. All right. Pressure's on you, Doug. <laughs> I will say the answer whenever you post it. Um, Next, TJ is wondering, does the payment processor provided by the Epic Game Store take a percentage from a purchase made? Like um, PayPal takes about 5%, for example. Ooh, that's a good one, too. I think we're going to need to phone a friend. I believe the answer is no, but I want to I want to be absolutely sure before we say that. Um, I think if that that information is also the, in the agreement. Um, so we'll... Um, we'll reach out to some folks too, to verify that one. Awesome. Um, Sky is wondering when you release a game, can you use custom publisher or developer name, or does it need to be your organization's name? Um, so if, if you're, if you want to use, um, it to show up on the product page or, um, yeah, I, the... yeah, I believe it's just, um, for the publisher developer name. Can it be separate from the organization name that they put in previously? Yeah, I think, um, Sean, go ahead. I believe the way that it works and don't hold me to this. But I believe the way that it works is that uh, that's a custom field. You can enter the publisher name to display however you want on a product page. But once the user actually goes through the checkout flow, that's where they'll see the official organization name. Yeah. That's right. We okay. do encourage you to like don't, don't use a spoof name in there. <laughs> we will review it. Um, and that is part of, you know, we talked about configuration review and its success. Mm. We, we do have team members that are, are evaluating um, to, to make sure that your information is truthful. And um, so I uh, definitely want it to be correct in there. Okay, awesome. Uh, Doug's answer to the previous question, by the way, everyone, about if keys can be revoked. Keys cannot be revoked through self-service, but please feel free to reach out through a private case if you have keys that need to be revoked and we'll lend a hand. So there Thanks, you go. Doug. Awesome. Well, I think we've caught up again on all questions and we have definitely tackled this from every single possible angle. Um, so first, I mean, thank you so much for coming on and walking through all the self-publishing tools with us. Again, the demo was incredible. If anyone missed it, uh, once the video is published afterwards, please go back and watch it. It goes through just about everything you could possibly need to know literally step-by-step step for getting everything ready for publishing your own game and project. Um, other than that, is there any final things that you would like for anyone to know anywhere you want them to go or things to do? This is your, this is your chance. Where do the people go if they have questions and want to talk to you? Documentation. Gwenia, we'll you take that one. Yeah, please join us on community. We're going to be there. We want to hear from you. Um, and, also just welcome we are so excited to welcome new store partners um so we're, we're psyched <laughs> yeah for anybody who doesn't have it store.epicgames.com slash distribution i think that'll take you to our landing page where you can learn about the publishing tools and, and sign up and that'll point you to all those different resources we've been talking about ad nauseum today so Fantastic. Yes, good call. And then to, to that same end, uh, the community URL, if you, I, I, you guys are probably all familiar with the community since you, it's the, the same site as for Unreal community, but instead of dev.epicgames.com slash Unreal, you're going to go slash 
underscore epic games underscore i'm sorry epic underscore games underscore store and that's where you'll find us lots of underscores make sure so many underscores. Right. i cannot <laughs> underscore just... enough how much you should join community <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. We have to end it now. We have to. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you both so much for coming on again and walking through all of this stuff with us. This is this is a huge launch. This gives a lot of power into developers' hands directly. So thank you so much genuinely for getting this to happen in the first place. Everyone who worked on self-publishing tools, thank you so much for all of your hard work. And thank you for getting this out to our community. I know this is gonna be great for them to be able to get all of their stuff done and make that step that maybe they didn't know how to handle or were nervous about. This definitely helps simplify that process exponentially. So thank you so much, sincerely, for all of your work. Thanks, so Thanks a lot, that was a lot of fun. Awesome. And thank you everyone um, for coming and watching the show today. It wouldn't be what it is without you and your participation. If you had any questions that didn't get answered today, please go join that community that they were talking about so you can get involved and get those answers that you need. But other than that, if you missed any part of the stream earlier, no worries whatsoever. We post all of our streams in video format that you can view on both our Twitch and YouTube channel at Unreal Engine. You can also follow us on all socials at Unreal Engine as well. And please come say hi in our forums where you can get the latest news and all of the links associated with today's stream as well. So with that, oh, oh I'm out of breath. <laughs> that was such a long one. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming and I will see the rest of you next week for next Inside Unreal. Bye everyone. Thank you.